Hey guys, welcome back to Bernard Explains Beyond. My name is Karish and today we're gonna be talking about something demonic. A really scary Japanese horror movie called Noroi. It was an amazing watch and you all should watch it by joining my telegram channel. The movie follows a paranormal investigator who came across multiple cases involving something mysterious but soon he would discover that everything is connected. So we're gonna talk about Norohoi, so stick around till end. On top of everything, if you're new to my channel, then make sure to subscribe to it, cause this is the best place to find horror for around the world. And with that said, let's dive into the video. So the movie begins with a notice, saying that the names of the characters are changed in this movie, and it's a typical message in found footage films to portray the movie as if it really happened. Then on screen, popped up a ghost videotape. You find out about a paranormal investigator, Kobayashi, and he has done so many paranormal investigation in all over Japan. We can see Kobayashi doing some investigation, but then on 17th March 2004, Kobayashi wrapped up his final investigation, and then on 19th March, Kobayashi's house was burned to the ground. His wife, Keiko's remains were found after the fire, but Kobayashi went missing. Until this day, no one really knew what happened to him. The last investigation of Kobayashi was named Noroi, which means curse. And now let's watch that tape and see what really happened with Kobayashi. The date was 12th of November 2002 when Kobayashi had come to visit a woman named Mitsuo. Cause Mitsuo claimed that she was hearing voices from her neighbor's house. She had a little daughter and upon asking questions, Mitsuo claimed that there was an old woman who lives in her neighboring house and she had a little son. Mitsuo was worried that the woman might be up to something bad, so to investigate, Kobayashi went to meet with that woman. He knocked on the door and the woman came out screaming. She asked, who the hell are you and how can you talk to me like this? And then she shut the door on Kobayashi's face. Perplexed, Kobayashi went home, though his camera caught the little son for a split second. However, upon a closer inspection of that video, Kobayashi found a weird voice that was captured around the time when they saw the little child. With some help of a friend, Kobayashi was able to amplify the particular sound, which turned out to be a sound of knock one. But more than five human babies. On 20th November, Kobayashi went back to meet Mitsu where he found out that the woman from the neighboring house moved out a few days ago and since then, Mitsuo never heard the crying baby again. Kobayashi went back to that woman's house and there, from a letter, he discovered that the woman was named Junko Ishii. Not only that, but there were multiple dead pigeons around Junko's former house, but that's not where the story ends. A few days later, on 25th of November, Kobayashi found out that Mitsuo and her daughter died in a car accident and this made Kobayashi believe that there might be something demonic that happened there. Anyway, Kobayashi decided to went on with his life until next year on August 23. A TV channel aired a show in which a psychic named Koishi was gonna test psychic abilities of some random children from all around the Japan. To do that, Koishi gave every kid a little box containing a random drawing inside. And then the kids were told to draw the drawing without even looking at what the drawing was. After every round, the drawings were revealed and to everyone's surprise, a girl named Kana was getting every drawing conspicuously correct. Koichi concluded that Kana might have psychic abilities but during the final round, Kana failed and instead of a correct thing, Kana drew a demonic face. Then in the next round, Everyone was given empty flask and they had to imagine water inside of the flask. The deal was if anyone's flask gets water inside on its own, then the person is psychic. And once again, Connor did it. Her flask was filled with dirty water that has hair in it. And this experiment caused Connor to have a headache. The sample of that water was sent to a lab and there the scientists revealed that the water was from a river and the hair was of a human baby, which was strange and it caught Kobayashi's attention. So on 27th of August 2003, Kobayashi went to interview Kana's parents. Kana's mother revealed that Kana has been sick since the day she did that miracle on that show. She had constant headache, but doctors had no clue what was wrong with her. 
Kobayashi thought it was another usual case of psychic abilities, but then on October 23rd, 2003, there was a variety show that included a psychic girl named Marika, who went to visit a haunted shrine with her teammates. At the shrine, Marika felt a weird sensation on her neck. They found two dried up trees that were oozing something wicked, and then Marika heard a voice, a man's voice, but no one else heard it. Marika was scared, but suddenly she collapsed, started screaming and shaking like she was having a seizure. Well, this footage was aired on TV on 26th of November 2003 during a talk show. Marika was guest starring with Kobayashi, who asked Marika several questions, but the thing was that Marika had no memory of what happened to her at the shrine. Another guest was called on the stage, a psychic, and his name was Hori. Hori wore a weird hat and coat that were covered with aluminium foil, and he acted as if he was mentally ill. But that wasn't the case. Actually, you see, Hori had too much powers that allowed him to see stuff he didn't want to see and to keep those things away. Hori used to live like that. Now on stage, as soon as Hori saw Marika, he attacked her. He started screaming, pigeons are coming again and again. Security took Hori out, but if you remember that we've seen dead pigeons outside Junko's house. After that show, Kobayashi met with the director of that variety show. The director showed Kobayashi explicit version of the video of the shrine Marika visited. There was something shocking that was in that video that made Kobayashi call Marika. Kobayashi showed Marika the footage and she was shocked as he was. Then Marika showed Kobayashi her diary in which she had drawn some weird patterns. According to Marika, she's been drawing these patterns in her sleep. Well, the shocking thing in Marika's video was an apparition of a human that had the same face as Kana's drawing that we saw earlier. Kobayashi noticed that, so he went back to meet with Kana on December 4th. He found out that Kana's doing fine now, but she used to talk with someone in her room, something invisible. Kobayashi asked Kana to whom she talked to, and Kana just said one thing, that it's too late for all of them. It was a warning that we will understand in the end. During dinner, the family was eaten when suddenly an invisible force threw plates away. Something happened to Kana and her parents took her to her room, leaving Kobayashi baffled as he witnessed a spoon spinning on the table. On December 9th, another psychic came on that variety show and she went to meet with Hori to ask him why he attacked Marika. On her way, people told the psychic to go back because Hori is deranged, but psychic went to meet with him anyways. She found out that Hori's entire house was covered with incantations and when Hori invited the psychic inside, the rooms were covered in aluminium foil. Upon asking questions, Hori revealed that he senses something demonic for a few years now and that thing was growing. Hori talked about ecoplasmic worms and how they're gonna take over Japan. Those worms wanted to eat people according to Hori and whoever would come in their contact will get eaten. Here Hori is actually telling us about the curse and how it's spreading but he's addressing the curse as worms. Then on 22nd of December, Kana disappeared. Kobayashi went to meet with Kana's parents and they were devastated. They told Kobayashi that there was something really bad that happened to Kana and a guy in tinfoil hat used to visit her often. The Kana told her parents that the guy was helping her. Obviously, the guy was Hori. Kobayashi found a paper in Kana's room that had a lot of incantation along with Japanese word, the skete, which means help. Kana was asking for help, but the paper also contained the same pattern Marika drew in her diary and they Kobayashi discovered that everything was connected. Kobayashi then went to meet with Hori to ask about Kana. He asked Hori about the purpose of all that aluminium and according to Hori, it kept him safe from those worms. He told Kobayashi that those worms are now eating people and they ate Kana too. Kobayashi asked where Kana was but then Hori snatched the paper Kobayashi found in Kana's room and he used his powers to draw a map. Kobayashi thought Hori was drawing the map to the place where Kana was, but instead he drew a building and from a particular room, worms were coming out. Hori told Kobayashi in which direction he would find that building and then Hori started screaming. 
he screamed. What is Kagutaba? The camera glitched and Kobayashi had to leave the house. So when he checked the footage, so just when Hori said the word Kagutaba, demonic mask appeared between the camera glitch. Anyway, Kobayashi looked all day for that building Hori drew but was not able to find it. On 26th of December, Variga called Kobayashi because she found some yarn on her table that she put together into weird loops while she was asleep. Marika was scared, so Kobayashi installed a camera in her room. At night, Marika got on her feet, went to her balcony, and after a while, came back to bed. The next day, Kobayashi and Marika found similar loops on balcony that this time, Marika made them of wires. Suddenly, someone started banging on the ceiling, and thinking that it could be Marika's friend Midori, they went to talk to her. Midori denied that she wasn't the one banging on the floor, nor did she heard any noise. However, this was the time when Midori would catch the curse from Marika. On January 6, 2004, Kobayashi finally found the building Hori drew. Kobayashi went to that particular room from where the bombs were coming out. No one was there, but Kobayashi found out that a guy named Osawa who lives in that apartment. Kobayashi talked with the neighbor and he told him that he heard banging noise from Osawa's place and Osawa was kind of strange. The next day, Kobayashi finally saw Osawa on his balcony where there was a lot of patients and Osawa caught one of the patients before taking it inside. It was then revealed that on January 10th, Osawa disappeared. That day, when Kobayashi was looking closely into the footage from Mariko's room, he heard a voice. With the help of his friend, Kobayashi was able to clearly hear the voice and it was a man's voice saying Kagutaba. Then Marika heard that voice and she was shocked as she then remembered that it was the same voice she heard back in the shrine before she collapsed. It evidently meant that the word Kagutaba was the key to that mystery. Kobayashi started looking for the word Kagutaba and after a lot of research, he came across a guy named Shioya who was familiar with this term. On 15th January, Kobayashi went to meet with Shioya who pulled out a book. The book contained tales of a village called Shimokage, a village that went underwater after a dam was broken. Before that, the folks of Shimokage village used to perform a weird ritual that allegedly calmed a demon down and the demon's name was Kagutaba. Chiyoya then pulled out an old document which contained information about Kagutaba, a demon who possesses power of disaster. According to an old tale, sorcerers from western countries came to live in Chimokage village and they were the ones who did a ritual to summon Kagutaba on earth. So something went wrong during the ritual and Kagutaba ended up killing people around the village. To stop the demon, Another ritual was performed and the ritual was simply called the Kagutaba ritual. It was done to keep the demon calm and hidden under the village so it won't harm people on the surface. The people of Shimokage village used to perform the ritual every year to keep the demon calm. But since the dam was broken, the ritual was stopped. After this knowledge, Kobayashi wanted to know more about Kagutaba ritual so he went to meet with a researcher named Tanimura. On 18th of January, Tanimura told Kobayashi that the last time Kagutaba ritual was done was during 1978 and it was also recorded on tape. The ritual was performed by a priest named Ishii and now let's watch the ritual. So in the video we can see Shimokage village. There were a lot of dogs that were used during the ritual. Kagutaba's face was exactly like the mask we've seen in the story and during the ritual the daughter of priest Ishii wore one of those masks. She indulged and performed the ceremony and priest Ishii then finished the ritual to calm the demon down. But that last time, something went wrong. Priest's daughter ended up screaming and crying in pain and the ritual was abandoned in its midst. Tanimura then told Kobayashi that people said that priest's daughter got possessed after their ritual. But no one knows the truth since the village was then underwater and the priest was long dead. However, his daughter was alive and she lived in priest's house. Then without further ado, Kobayashi went to meet with Ishii's daughter who then lived in a village called Mikashi. In that village, 
there were also so many dogs, but what was shocking was that Ishii's house was totally covered in spiral loops. It was evident that Ishii's daughter was indeed possessed by Kagutaba, and that was where the curse began. He knocked on the door and suddenly came out Junko, who screamed and ran away, and obviously it meant that Junko was the daughter of the priest, and if you remember, that her last name was Ishii. Jinko Ishii. She was the woman who was spreading the curse all around. Kobayashi then talked to the neighbors and according to him, since Jinko came back from Tokyo after graduating, weird things started happening in the village. The folks believed that Jinko was cursed and some people were scared of her name. Then on January 21st, Kobayashi went to Tokyo and talked to the people at Jinko's university. After investigating for a while, he came across a co-worker of Jinko on 27th of January, who worked with Junko in an abortion clinic. The co-worker revealed that Junko was the in charge of disposing embryos, but she didn't do that. Instead, she took all the embryos home for an unknown reason. On February 6th, Marika came to meet with Kobayashi and she was crying because her friend Midori was dead. Midori and a dozen other people committed a mass on alignment in a nearby park and Marika was so scared that she left her house. Kobayashi then brought Marika to his house where we meet with his wife Keiko who was then gonna take care of Marika. Kobayashi then looked through the people who died in the park and one of them was Osawa who went missing a few days ago. On 11th February, Kobayashi again went to Osawa's apartment and talked to the neighbor. This time, he found out that Osawa used to argue a lot with a woman who lived next door but she moved out the day after Osawa went missing. The woman had a little boy with her and obviously she turned out to be Jinko Ishii and it made Kobayashi believe that all the people who died were cursed by Kagutaba. Things took a worse turn on 12 February when Kobayashi found out that Kana's father murdered his wife, obviously because of the curse. Meanwhile, Marika experienced something demonic as she rendered into an unconscious state and groaned before her dinner. Scared, Keiko witnessed visions banging into the window before Marika collapsed. When Marika woke up, she was terrified after seeing dead visions outside the house and then she believed that she might be the next one to die. Marika told everything to Kobayashi and then to survive, Marika needed to take action. The next day, Marika and Kobayashi went to meet with Hori and they showed him the footage where they caught Junko on camera. But seeing Junko, Hori started screaming and didn't help at all. After that, Marika decided to go at the dam where Shimokage village was. Her plan was to do Kagutawa ritual herself so she could calm the demon and get rid of the curse. Kobayashi agreed and they even took Hori on that journey just in case he could help him. On 18th February, Kobayashi, Hori, Marika and cameraman went to the dam. Kobayashi and Marika took a boat towards the place where the village was and Hori and cameraman stayed behind. Marika was feeling very happy and cursed but somehow she did the ritual successfully and as soon as the ritual ended, Marika felt very light and happy. Apparently, her method worked and she believed that the curse was lifted from her. But on the other hand, Hori started screaming. He called the two out of the water and told them that Kagutaba was coming. Kobayashi sent Marika and cameraman back in the car but he went after Hori who ran away deep into the woods while screaming Kano's name again and again. Cameraman took Marika back home but Hori and Kobayashi soon began to discover multiple dead dogs and they were sacrificed very recently. They found a magic field with pigeon's feather and claws tied to a rope and inside the field there were a lot of sacrificed dogs. Hori screamed like a maniac and meanwhile Marika again felt heavy in the car. She started groaning so cameraman pulled over and checked on her when suddenly she screamed and ran into the darkness. On the other hand, Hori and Kobayashi reached a broken shrine that had Kagutaba symbol on it and there Hori started looking for Kana in a weird broken structure. Meanwhile, cameraman found Marika in the woods 
who was on the ground, screaming and crying and wailing. After this, Hori saw something, and in the night vision of camera, Kobayashi saw that it was Kano. And demonic embryos were crawling all over her. Kobayashi was hell now scared, and Hori fell unconscious. Back on Marika, who suddenly stopped screaming, and she even forgot what just happened. Though after this, Marika was fine. The next day, Hori and Marika was admitted in a hospital, while Kobayashi went back to Jinko Ishii's house in a hope to talk to her. That time, Kobayashi broke into the house since no one answered the door, and the entire house was trashed from inside. After looking here and there, Kobayashi went to the first floor, and there in a room, he found Junko Ishii's dead body hung from the ceiling, surrounded by a lot of witchcraft stuff. A wall was covered in Kagutaba's mask, and there, behind the table, Kobayashi found Kana, but poor girl was dead. He also found the little boy who was allegedly Junko's son, and he was alive. Evidently, Junko successfully performed the ritual, but for the time being, Kobayashi called the police and they handled the case. Now further in the documentary, we were told that Kobayashi adopted that little boy because after DNA test, it was revealed that he was not Chinko's son. Who he was? Well, police was never able to identify the boy. He had no record at all. On March 6th, we see that boy eating dinner with Kobayashi and Keiko, but he didn't say a word. March 8th, Kobayashi meet with Marika, who was then fine and was feeling amazing and happy. So basically, Marika saved herself from that curse by performing Kagu Tower ritual and the time when she was screaming into the woods was the time when the curse was actually leaving her body. On March 13th, we find out that Hori was then admitted in a mental hospital and then on March 17th, Kobayashi was summoned by Tanimura who found another scroll about Kagu Tower. That scroll had the ritual depiction to wake the demon into our world and that was what happened in this story. Actually, you see, Junko was possessed since 1978 and the girl slowly changed her over time. She wanted to bring Kagutawa back in our world and to do that, she needed a medium. That medium became Kana and Junko kidnapped her and fed her the embryo she stole from abortion clinic. Along her way, Junko spread the curse across Japan that ended up killing many people. In the end, Junko sacrificed herself and completed the ritual, and that meant that Kagutaba was then in the real world and he would claim as many souls as he won. But where was Kagutaba? Let's find out. The curse tape ended there, but we find out that on 19th March, Kobayashi's house was burned to the ground and Keiko died. Kobayashi went missing, and not only that, but Hori escaped the asylum and his dead body was found twisted in a duct. After this, on May 19th, a video was received in a publishing company and the video was titled Noroi. And the sender was Kobayashi. In the video, we see that on 19th March, Hori escaped and came to Kobayashi's house. Hori picked up a rock and he told Kobayashi that Kagu Taba was inside his house and then Hori ran and grabbed that little boy. According to Hori, that boy was actually Kagutaba and Kobayashi and Keiko tried to stop him a lot but in the end, Hori ended up beating the boy's head again and again until he died. In that hassle, Kobayashi and Keiko were also injured but then suddenly, the boy got on his feet and he really became Kagutaba. Kagutaba then possessed Hori and Keiko and then Hori hit Kobayashi hard on the head before leaving the house with Kagutaba. Kobayashi was injured enough that he couldn't move when Keiko went and poured gasoline all over her. And what happened next was evident. Keiko died and the whole house was burned to the ground. Kobayashi went missing and he is still missing to this day. And this is where the movie ends. So this was the summary of the movie, Noroi. And I hope you all still would have told you to like my video. If you wanna watch this movie, then you gotta subscribe to my telegram. If you wanna be in touch with me, then follow my other social media. All the links are in the description box. 
If you like this video, then make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe my channel for more horror content. And I'll see you all in the next one. Till then, stay awake, because they always see you.